My name is Scott Olowinski, President of Gilware Incorporated, and I'm here to just show you a little bit about uh, what it takes to do a control board uh, swap on a drive. Very common uh, at Gilware is we get a drive in from a customer with a bad control board, and uh, they may have attempted some control board swaps by basically purchasing a drive of a very similar model and trying that to fix, uh, hopefully fix their drive. Uh, although this used to work on older hard drives, uh, drives made 10 or 15 years ago, unfortunately current or modern hard drives actually store a lot of drive specific information on the control board. So actually taking a control board from even one made very close to the same time and putting it onto your drive may or may not work. I'm going to demonstrate two drives here that were actually made extremely close to one another. Um, in fact, uh, they were out of a RAID system, uh, these two drives were, and their serial numbers are literally just a couple off. And I will actually swap the control boards uh, and actually demonstrate that, unfortunately, after the swap, uh, they don't work anymore. So as you can see on this particular drive, um, the firmware version, it says DE12, um, is actually exactly the same as the firmware version on this other drive. Again, you'll see the firmware DE12. Uh, these drives came out of the exact same uh, RAID system, and as I mentioned, they're made very, very close to one another. What I'm going to actually do now is take the control board for one of these drives, put it onto the other drive, and unfortunately, it's no longer going to detect, and you'll actually hear some clicking noises coming from the device. I've had taken all the screws out of uh, both control boards and removed them here. I'm simply going to take this control board from this drive, place it onto here, screw it back down. Once I'm done with that, I'll actually plug it in uh, and you'll be able to hear what the drive does when it no longer has its original control board. I've placed the control board back on to this other drive. I'm now going to place it into the carriage here and power it up and you can hear that fluttering sound that's going on there uh, the reason that's doing that is uh, the control boards store uh, specific uh, calibration adaptive information uh, for the head stack on the drive and because this is not the original control board even though it's a very similar board uh, the drive is confused and, and cannot find itself I've put the original control board back onto this hard drive so it's in its original condition once again. I'm now just going to place it back into this carriage and power it up. You should up. see it detect here in disk management as a healthy drive, no more clicking noises. There you go, 500 gigabyte drive, which is correct. So the moral of the story here is that unfortunately the control boards from one drive to the other are, are not compatible and furthermore uh, it can actually do more harm than good. Um, although this was not the case here, uh, on some particular drives when you take a control board from one and put it onto the other, uh, it can actually damage internal components of the drive and although uh, we may still be able to recover the data, it may be significantly more difficult and cost uh, more money because of that.